One minute. There we go. All right. We will call to order the uh, July 6th uh, Mentor Municipal Planning Commission meeting, and we will begin with a pledge to the flag. <coughs> pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jessica, can you call the roll, please? Mrs. Simperman. Here. Ms. Moritz. Here. Mr. Perkovic. Absent. Mr. Sedoti. Here. Mr. Valeri. Here. Mr. Varga. Here. Mr. Snow. Absent. Mr. Perkovic and Mr. Snow are both um, absent today. Um, approval of the June 15th minutes. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Jessica. Ms. Simperman. Yes. Ms. Moritz. Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Valeri. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. All right, we have two public hearings. Um, we will have the applicants come up. We'll have them speak, um, kind of tell us what they would like to do, see if anyone has anything for or against. Um, first item is the rezoning of 0.18 acres from OV uh, Old Village District Residential to OV Old Village District Commercial at 7461 Presley Avenue. Is that applicant here? You would come up and tell us who you are and what you'd like to do. <coughs> I'm uh, Jeff Kamey. This is Andrew Meinhold with Erie Bank. And uh, we have a <clears throat> lack of parking at the location. And we're, uh, we'd like to get the rezoning in order to put in 15 parking spaces. All right. Anyone here speak for? Anyone speak against? We'll close the public hearing. Um, Mr. Spence, anything from the administration? Yeah, the administration uh, had a couple comments regarding uh, landscaping, and one was to uh, put some evergreen hedge across the uh, front of the parking lot, which faces sublot one and sublot two, which will be residential units, and uh, possibly shift the street trees that they show out towards the street. And then uh, between the two parking lots, there's a space there. We recommend they put uh, decorative glasses, grasses there to delineate uh, between the two parking lots. Plus the, uh, the grasses are pretty hardy and can take uh, snow removal and stuff. You guys don't have any issues with that? No issues at all. No. Um, as far as parking lot lights go, it looks as though you're calling on here for a couple new pole lights. Is that right? Uh, yes. What's the height of those going to be? And I'm just trying to think because you're going to have that house right across the street. And, and right next to it. And right next to it. I actually don't know what the, there, there are a number of existing parking lights going all along uh, that area. You, you've got the lights along the street, but are you going to add anything in that parking field itself? You know, I have to... Uh, I'm not actually sure that there are additional parking lights. Um, I, I guess my point is is trying to be respectful to the, to the neighbors and anything that we can to either, if you're going to put new lights in that parking lot area, to, to keep them as low as possible or to at least put those on some, uh, some type of a dimmer so at night the, those neighbors aren't going to be stuck with lights glared into them. Yeah, house. absolutely. Um, I'm on the condo association board, at, you know, and I know all the residents and would definitely want to prevent any, uh, you know, disturbance. Um, and the landscaping, absolutely, will make sure it, you know, is in the right position and, um, you know, uh, shields against lighting. Mm -hmm. Any comments from the commission? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Sudo. Thank you. The parking lot's already in. You're using sublot 16 as parking, is that correct? Yes, the, the parking is not paved. It's not uh, striped and paved right. and striped. but you're using it now as parking. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. No, no, it, it's not being used as parking. All right. Um, it's um, yeah, sub, yeah, sublot yeah. 16 <clears throat> is just part of the sublots along the east side of Presley Way. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, they're all vacant. Uh, there will be homes built along the other parcels right. going up there. Okay. But this is just vacant land at the moment. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments? Questions? Motion to approve with uh, one condition. That's the detailed landscaping plan that has to be submitted. 
Second. Just please call the roll. Mrs. Simperman. Yes. Ms. Moritz. Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Valeri. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. All right. Thank you. Second item is a conditional use permit to allow a drive through facility at 9490 Diamond Center Drive. See that applicants here. So we have seen this before. Yes, um, my name is Ryan Oyster. I'm with GPD Group, the engineering and architecture firm for Taco Bell. And with me tonight is Adam Mackey. He is a with Taco Bell Corporation. Corporation. All right. And so, do you want to refresh us on what you're looking to do there? Sure. Um, the site plan. Do you have the site plan to put up, please? Where's that go? Oh, it's right here. I better just stick it up there. Um, so what we've done is, per our discussion with um, the plan commission, um, there were some current concerns about the traffic flow in the site. So what we've done is we've made um, the ingress and egress right in and right out only to help mitigate those concerns. Um, we also completed a traffic study um, to help find out if, you know, what kind of concerns there might be at either of the signalized intersections. And the traffic study came back and indicated that there was um, no adverse impact um, when we utilized the right in, right out here. Um, when we previously came in with the driveway proposed as full access, there could have been some concerns trying to make a left turn out of there, and the, and the traffic study bore that out. Um, so with this right in and right out, it really helps to um, alleviate any traffic concerns at this intersection and moves the traffic down to the signalized intersection at the other end of this development. Okay. Um, <coughs> since it is the, the public hearing, um, so the, for the drive through, that's what you guys are looking for. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. so essentially what we're looking for is we're looking for a conditional use permit to allow the drive through for this restaurant. Okay. Anyone here to speak for? Anyone to speak against? If you guys would please come up. And if you can state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, I'm Brian Sealinger and, and John Mack. And um, we own the property at 9528 Diamond Center, which is now the Brew Mentor. Um, our concerns uh, initially were with the traffic, and we still feel that that even though may be addressed with a right in and right out only. Um, the traffic is gonna be de deferred through the parking lot um, in front of what used to be the Brown Derby, which is now gonna be Noosa. Um, and it's gonna exit right in front of our store. That's already a, an extremely busy traffic light and it's almost impossible to make a left-hand turn out of there now. Um, that being said, um, there's also within one tenth of a mile, 10 food offerings there already. Um, so I'm not sure how familiar you are with that, but there's already 10 food different offerings right there. Um, so increasing that traffic in an area where it seems to have a lot of walk around traffic, we, you know, we have a couple hotels right there um, and we get a lot of walk around traffic, increasing that traffic at that intersection um, is gonna be problematic. So I don't know you know, where the traffic study, if it was in and out only directly in front of where the proposed Taco Bell is going to be, but if they're deferring traffic through in front of Noosa, um, Subway, Julio Bonazza's, and then exiting at the traffic light that's at the corner of my store, that's already a problematic uh, intersection. We'll give them an opportunity then sure. to provide some feedback on that. Any other Anyone else? All right. So we'll close the public hearing then. So traffic was um, one of the concerns that we had. And I'm not sure if the, the traffic portion's 100% um, relevant for the, for the drive-through, but I think it's something that we should focus on. So, Sure. 
Um, and to try to address some of his concerns, you know, um, <clears throat> we can only assume that, you know, 50% of the traffic is going to make the right turn out. And so when they go down and make that left um, at that signal, um, a lot of the traffic is still going to exit in front of the Taco Bell. Um, and we're talking about, um, I think the peak PM trip ends was like 30, 30 car, somewhere in that neighborhood, 35 um, vehicles. And so we're talking about a car every two minutes going either direction. So if you assume half of them go one way, half of them go the other, now you're talking maybe a car every four minutes going left. You know, so I, I hear his concerns, um, but the analysis bore out that even with the addition of the Taco Bell, even into the future of 2038, that tra traffic signal will still function as designed um, with the increase, with the minor increase in traffic. So the report did actually address that intersection. So, so that report, was it looking at ingress, egress? I mean, I know one of the, the concerns that I had brought up the last time was the amount of traffic that was going to be going through that parking lot. Um, so you've got, we, we, we've got NUSA that's going to be going inside there now also. So you've got all of the vehicles that are going to be needing to turn and cross through the parking lot to get to that. Sure. And, sure. and that was my area of concern rather than the, the right in, right, a, right in, right out. It was that cross traffic through the parking lot. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, I don't know if you can zoom in on, yeah. on this um, aerial that we have here. Um, so basically what we had talked about was adding a stop sign here to help, you know, mitigate the traffic concerns with um, that movement. Right yeah. And, and then again, we're talking about, so the, the peak trips is like 35 somewhere, I think was the PM peak trips. And so, you know, it's not an, a large addition of traffic that this Taco Bell was causing um, to this shopping center. Um, okay. Mr. Spence, anything from the administration? <clears throat> no. <clears throat> Not to put you on the spot, um, when's the last time we approved a drive through without a um, bypass lane? Uh, with Panda Express. Okay. That would be the most recent okay. one. All right. Any comments from the administration's questions? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Lemperman. Um, could you put that aerial back up again? Yeah. So I'm trying to trying to get the idea here. So where you have um, the left farthest arrow, is that the, um, yes, that is going to be the, uh, the right in lane, is that correct? So there'll be a right in. At that location. And a right out a little, they're, they're actually separated a little bit, so if we pull. Right, I, I saw that, but I was kind of trying to get an idea with the aerial. Thing. Yes, that's okay, exactly. So that, that, right, that um, uh, entrance is going to become a right in only. Correct. Okay, and then the right out will be directly north of the um, the drive through. through. So, Correct. Okay, and your building is going to be in front of all the other buildings. That's correct. So it's actually going to be. Can you maybe? Uh, so. Let me show you on the so if. You, building's going to be right here. And you basically have a right out coming out this way, and right ends coming in right here. And you're going to have an island at the end of the building now. That's correct. Okay. And we'll, have, we'll actually have signage at the end of the drive-through here, which directs people if they want to take a left We're, to get to Heisley Road. Having a hard time hearing you. Um, we'll have signage here at the end of the drive through lane that directs traffic that wants to get to Heisley Road that they have to turn right. And so that way they don't get to that intersection and they try to take a right or try to take a left at the right. So um, I guess I understand what you're saying, and I think that this is um, for you. I think that's a, a good solution. I can just tell you, though, um, I don't see people going to that light, um, especially at 4 o'clock in the morning. But I don't think there's a problem at 4 o'clock in the morning. But um, <laughs> I know at 10 o'clock this morning, there wasn't any traffic 
And yeah. I was like, you got to be kidding me. You want me to go all the way down there to that traffic light to come out? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I see some people trying to sneak out of these right in, right outs. And so mm -hmm. I agree with the administration um, in that you need to make it so that it's not easy to do. Yeah, I, when we agree with that, we can increase, increase that radius. radius. Yeah, give, give you a better radius to make sure that they're heading in that direction. Absolutely. I would also, now the one to the west, the right in on the... Yep. Yeah. Is that radius going to be increased? We can do that as well. Because, I, again, I, I could see just going out that way. Yep, we can, we can make sure to increase the... To, to, yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, um, Mr. Spence, have you seen, I didn't see the traffic uh, study in our packet. Do you have a copy of the traffic study yes. that they're referencing? Okay. Um, and we met with the city engineer and traffic engineer with the city, and they reviewed it. Okay. They thought that it was great. Um, they're not here tonight, so they can't speak on that behalf. But we did meet with them to kind of go over it and make sure that it was squared away. Mr. Chairman? Ms. Simper. Um, I think we should make the applicant aware that you need a simple majority, so you'll need three of us to vote for this, and we have two people missing, so I didn't know if you wanted to, for us to go forward or not. Um, I think we, yeah, I think we would. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Um, Barga. Barga. <laughs> or Jeff. Jeff wants to. <coughs> Mr. Jeff. <laughs> Mr. Jeff. Uh, have, has this been reviewed by the fire marshal by any chance? Yeah. The, the maintained fire lanes? Yeah. He's comfortable with this double lane behind the existing building and kind of dumping into this parking lot? And yes. Not really being able to get out except coming back through the... Okay. Well, I, I guess, Mike, the other concern I have, and I think we're alluding to this, is that just based on observations of common behavior... Someone's going to pick up their food and drive up, and maybe they are going to turn right. So they'll park and pull up into that section. And then the person, be and they're waiting because there's a lot of traffic coming from the west. The next person picks up their food. They want to go east or west, but they're going to pull right in behind that car. And then when they get there and that car makes its turn to the east, all of a sudden they're sitting there and they're going, oh, wait a minute, I don't want, I, there's a sign that says I can't make this turn. Oh, I'm going to make the turn anyhow, right? Because that's how people are. Sure. I just see I just see a lot of violation of that right hand only turn exit against what is it sometimes not all the time but sometimes a very uh, fast moving incoming traffic from Heisley Road heading east Saturday mornings times like that it's really a lot of traffic around here so I, I just I just know that what happens is people will violate that. And I hate to go ahead and approve something on the assumption that they won't violate it, only knowing that they will violate it. And one thing to keep in mind is that currently the driveway is not right in, right out. So as it stands today, people can turn left out of there and will be able to in the future. I, I understand. I, so I, this is making it better. We have these all along Manor Avenue and people violate them all the time. It, yeah, and this is That's trying to problem. make the situation better for now and in for, for the future. Um, for future development, even in this development, that will be there forever. Even though there's a reason why I don't really like this idea, let me let me just throw this out. Had you considered eliminating that completely and having everyone exit at the light? Um, we have not. Because then everyone would be exiting at light, and their turns either east or west would be controlled by a traffic light, and you wouldn't have people trying to. Th th sneak out. That is true. Um, Though I don't like the idea of everyone going I, through the parking lot. I, I, you know. Yeah, I'm not sure about that um, because of the fact that we did do the traffic analysis. They looked at both this intersection now and in the future, as well as the signal now and in the future, and they both operated acceptable levels. Um, and so I think that allowing them to, to choose, you know, to, to make that ride out kind of diffuses the traffic a little bit. Um, yeah, and, and keep them from all going down to the light. Nick? Mr. Spence. Yeah, I think if you increase those radiuses so that they're headed 
when they're headed out of those, they're pointing in the right direction. We did that up at Sheets on Lakeshore Boulevard, and, and it seems to work. So, okay. yeah, right. I, I guess the only comment that also that I would have is the um, the concern about traffic that's going to be coming back through that parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, as much of a hardship as it may be on other people, but potentially looking at some speed humps or bumps or something in that parking lot. Because what I think is going to end up happening is you're going to have cars are going to come, they're going to go out in that top row along um, Diamond Center. They're going to realize that you're going to get backed up at that light, so they're going to cut through and they're going to come down and around. Um, whatever we can do just from a safety standpoint. Yeah. Here. But it, it looked like somebody was acknowledging, I, saying I, yes. So, the so the, the, that's the property owner here? And uh, you guys would be amendable to allowing us to install some speed bumps? Yeah. So we can put that as a condition? So we'll have to put that as a condition for, for approval. Okay. Any other questions or comments? I have a question of the city. Would, the city, would the city considering, consider altering that traffic light so that there would be a, a left-hand turn only sing, signal? I don't think we'd be prepared to answer that. That's obviously a pretty significant project if we're going to alter well, signalized intersection. Because all this traffic now is going to make. Well, that there's turn. also projected increased, uh, you know, um, traffic from a future Menards development and, and others uh, further down along. So it's it's not a. So, so I don't think that's anything so, the city could. So the answer to. right now would be uh, no. Soft no. Right. Yeah. Soft no. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyone else? And, and this is just for the drive-through line, just not for the, the site plan, right? Correct. Uh, motion to approve with three conditions. The third condition being the installation of um, speed control in the parking lots. Second from anyone? Second. Just please call the roll. Mrs. Simperman? No. Ms. Moritz? Yes. Mr. Sedoti? No. Mr. Valeri? Yes. Mr. Varga? No. So it does not pass. Um, Mr. Zeman, fact and finding? I think so. Um, if there's something that the applicant can do to, to alleviate the situation, I think that would be a good discussion to have. All right. Mrs. Simperman? Um, I'm worried about the welfare and safety of um, the other people within the establishment and the location of this drive-through and the fact that there's no bypass lane. The whole configuration. Mr. Sedoti. I'm worried about the same issue that Mr. Valeri brought up, the amount and the volume of traffic that we're going to send down towards Brew Manor, towards that light, and people are going to be going west, east, then they're going to make it at the light, they're going to make a left. It's just a lot of volume of traffic going through that parking lot, which causes safety concerns also. And there's some other uh, issues I have, but it's more with the site plan. <clears throat> Mr. Varga. Uh, safety is the number one concern. Uh, I believe that much more than half of their business is coming from Heisley Road. There's basically a, a, a long dead end in the other direction with some apartments, but it's not even a through road. So I believe most of the traffic is coming from the, from the west. And there's just too many things about this that are just going to cause safety problems. All right. So then as far as number three goes, table, or should we talk through? Um, yeah, I think we table it at this point. And then um, if there's additional information that we can bring back to the board, um, could it be heard um, another time? Uh, what, yeah, why don't we... Uh, communicate a little bit uh, just because the nature of the information would have to be you know uh, why don't we talk a little bit tomorrow and uh, uh, Rick will have my contact information so we can go through the code a little bit relative to resubmissions and uh, okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Spence I have a question I just want to ask you is this property been uh, subdivided already nope all right, so I, then let me continue my question because it kind of alludes, it might be something they want to hear. Um, this new property line relative to the existing building is literally within a few feet of existing construction on, that, on the end of that building. 
um, even to the wall itself, it's it's just seven feet. Um, they may pay attention to table 602 in a building code. Certainly, which but it requires a 10 foot separation. To the, to the property line, mm -hmm. right? It, which that could be adjusted. Um, well, well, I'm just saying, I, I, I have concern about that because this creates a, 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 a problem for the existing building to put the property line where it's at. Yeah. So all the construction within 10 feet of the new property line would have to be one R rated. That's correct. And, and if you look, there's a lot of overhead and columns and gas service and a number of different things there that need to be concerned with. Yeah. So I, I'm just throwing that out. Since we're not going to talk about the site plan, I, I just want to say that's a concern that needs to be addressed in a future proposal. Certainly. Okay. So then entertain a motion to table um, item three, correct? Yes. Let's just leave it on the table. It? Oh, it's we're going to leave it on the table then. All right. And then um, item four. Thank you. I'm sorry, you said we were going to table it, right? It's rem on the table already. It's just going to remain tabled. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Right. Item number four, Mr. Spence, the rezoning of 6.97 acres. Um, yeah, we're going to, we've, the uh, Huntington Bank owns that property, so the applicant does not have standing, so okay. we can dismiss that. So remove it from the table and then dismiss? Correct. All right. Entertain a motion to remove? Motion to remove it from the table. Second. Jessica? Mrs. Simperman? Yes. Ms. Moritz? Yes. Mr. Sedoti? Yes. Mr. Valeri? Yes. Mr. Varga? Yes. And then entertain motion. a motion to go Motion ahead. to dismiss without prejudice. Second. Jess? Mrs. Simperman? Yes. Ms. Moritz? <laughs> yes. Mr. Sedoti? Yes. Mr. Valeri? Yes. Mr. Varga? Yes. Mr. Spence, same thing with number five, the minor subdivision. This has been on the... For about, what, four months? At least four meetings. Yeah. Four meetings, and you requested a master plan. We haven't received anything, right. so yeah, I would say we'd dismiss that, too. Okay. Motion to remove it from the table. Second. Jess, please call. Mrs. Simperman? Yes. Ms. Moritz? Yes. Mr. Sedoti? Yes. Mr. Valeri? Yes. Mr. Varga? Yes. Motion to dismiss without prejudice? Second. Yes. Mrs. Simperman? Yes. Ms. Moritz? Yes. Mr. Sedoti? Yes. Mr. Valeri? Yes. Mr. Varga? Yes. All right, Mr. Snow leaves and clean up the, uh, the agenda. <laughs> All right, moving on to new business. Item number six, miscellaneous review of a modification to a development plan at 7255 Center Street. Is that applicant here? If you can state your name for us and address. Uh, Michael Gatto, 29010 Chardon Road, Willoughby Hills, Ohio, 44092. And so your application is for the uh, addition of some new uh, site protection, huh? Yes. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, first of all, since there's not a full board here, I'd like to have a discussion but not a vote. Mr. Zeman? Uh, you might as well just table it then. I mean, it would seem to me that the discussion would be something that the other commission members, um, you know, should be privy to. You don't have to do that. Um, and they don't, I mean, they don't have to be present in order to potentially have this reheard. But I, I'm just thinking it'll, th this hearing will be conducted and then it'll be conducted all over again uh, at the next meeting. So uh, I think if the applicant requests it be detabled, I don't think the administration has any objection to that. And I think it would benefit to have a conversation too. I, That's up to you guys. Yeah. But, I, I think the, the conversation is gonna be along the lines of, at least from my opinion, this doesn't meet what, we, what we're gonna require you to do. Um, so as is the, the recommendation for me would at least be to, to install some bollards rather than the, uh, the large concrete I'll large, item. I, I, I have a, an estimate and they're too expensive. They're not, they're not feasible. So that, that would be the feedback that, that we would be providing, um, or at least for myself. So if we go have the, a further conversation, I think that you may hear that a couple other times that we'd be looking for you to, to remove these and install bollards. That's why I'd rather have a full board. Okay, then. Motion to table. Second. Jess, please call the roll. Mrs. Simperman? Yes. 
Ms. Moritz. Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Valeri. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. Item number seven is going to be a miscellaneous review of the accessory building in excess of 576 square feet at 5420 West Heisley Road. Is that applicant here? Nope. Man, you're moving right through. Oh. All right. Motion to table. Second. Jess, please call the roll. Mrs. Simperman. Yes. Ms. Moritz. Yes. yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Valeri. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Mr. Spence, did you have any conversation with the applicant? Or? I didn't, but I'm sure somebody did when they took the application in. All right. Item number eight, preliminary site plan for an office building at 7207 Hopkins Road. Is that applicant here? Yes. All right. My name is Dean Kendrick. I'm with uh, Professional Engineering Consultants. And uh, preliminary site plan, you want to use yours or? <coughs> So I'll give you a little bit background on the project. Uh, currently, there is a um, oral surgery facility and an orthodontist in this office. The, the proposed plan consists of renovating the existing building. The orthodontist is going to stay in the building, and uh, Dr. Schneider is going to use part of that building as teaching. He actually does uh, seminars for other oral surgeons in the state, so he's going to move his office to the new building. It's uh, 3,862 square feet. And both lots are owned by Mentor LLC. And it will be a med medical office building and it will be sprinkled. All right. Comments from the administration, Mr. Spence? Yeah, we had a couple comments relative to the uh, the access drive that goes to the alley behind the CVS, the uh, fire department wanted the appropriate turning radius for that, and also that that canopy needed to be uh, 13 feet, 6 inches high, so they can get fire apparatus under that. Um, I guess the other things, there's... Uh, while the property to the south has split zoning and uh, that the flag piece is zoned commercial, we would request that they install a, a eight or six foot solid fence uh, along that property line and also landscape that so that the adjacent residential properties are uh, buffered. And also if they could possibly shift the mechanical units to the rear uh, of the property that might be more helpful for the adjacent neighbors any issues with with those modifications no, the the only really problem the only really issue that we have uh, a problem resolving is the turning radius for the fire truck since we have the comments we've actually worked up a different site plan and i think if i can put this down here i can kind of show you how we've accommodated most of the request already so the request uh regarding the fencing we have fencing called out for on the south property line and there is a preliminary landscaping plan that was submitted this landscaping plan doesn't totally meet your uh, landscaping ordinance but it's going to be modified to to meet, to meet those requirements. Um, secondly, we have moved all of the mechanical units around to the east side of the building and, and put those in an enclosure. So the problem with, the problem we have is currently we're basing our setbacks on 20 feet, which is very close to what the existing building was. So we're trying to hold that. We cannot get a fire truck to make a turning movement back out onto the easement that is behind CVS. 
and the owner has some concerns about actually being able to follow through an agreement with them as well. So what we would propose is to treat the, the existing access lane on the parking lot in a hammerhead turnaround, which we have done analysis on, and this fire truck can make these turning movements back out and get back out to Hopkins Road. And then this is just a literally, so it's an oral surgery facility, so there will be patients that will be put under, and when they wake up, they need to be picked up here on this covered area, and then this is just for vehicular traffic only. And we can make vehicles make the movements, but we can't get a fire truck. I have an exhibit. This is what we tried to do to resolve it. And we need 25 foot radius here and a 25 foot radius here, and we can't get it. Mr. Spence. The fire department, I, I don't know if you've talked to anybody over in fire prevention. If I, I, I've not talked to Terry Scott. I, I talked to him initially. When, initially, this is what we proposed, and I never got any feedback from him. But um, firehead, uh, a hammerhead is a, a solution that has been used in the past. I, I'm not sure if you actually I, have done them here. I've seen the fire department use them. I, I guess they would have to review this modification. To and we can provide all the turning movement and analysis that we've done to, to show that it does work for a fire truck. And that movement works even with vehicles parked? That is correct. We have a 24 foot lane and we have 25 foot inside turning radiuses, which gives us 49 feet on the outside. And Mr. Spence, since it's just a preliminary, if, if we, well, ultimately, you'd be submitting a new site plan now. That is correct. So we should table it. Yeah. Yeah. We table it. Probably should table it until right. the fire department mm -hmm. reviews it. it. Right. We, that's, that's what we would like to do. Okay. If you table it, then we'd get a new site plan back in, and we would get this yeah. approved, and then we'd move forward. I, with the I think it, it might be appropriate to look at uh, the elevations. I, I was going to say Anything else that you want tied up and, and give comments on that? I guess the, the, the one area of concern that I have now with the, um, this new turnaround area is you've completely cannibalized any grass. Um, and, and I understand that you're looking for that, that carport, um, but now we've got just a large impervious property. Right, which is gonna increase the runoff and detention requirements as well. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the options that the architect actually wanted to do was just to leave that a dead end so that you pull up in there and you have to back out just like the fire truck, but we don't think that's really a viable solution. How many, how many patients are they seeing on a, on a daily basis? I mean, just trying to, to walk through it, do you need that carport or if you were to do parking over there or something else? Does that work? Well, they need the par carport because some of the people that are going to, the, peop the main people that are going to be using that are people that's going to be under sedation for oral surgery. Okay. Um, the surgeries aren't done every day. I, I can't really speak to the exact schedule that Dr. Schneider uses, but it's not an everyday thing. So then my feedback would end up being is if this, if you come back with this turnaround as your submittal, um, either a some type of um, landscaping or something else that we can end we, up doing. We would, we would update our landscaping plan to show how we planned on uh, keeping the area as natural as possible. Okay. Nick? Mr. Spence. One thing that we require is foundation plannings along one side of this building. Now, I don't know if it's going to be the north or the west side, but... Uh, we, we... So... The way it was interpreted with our landscape architect and the architect is we would rather put the foundation plantings on the existing building since you can't really see this building from the road and there's a fence on the north side. Would that be acceptable? The code really isn't a visibility issue. I mean, the code is to, to create developments that are so you have it on this building too. So when okay. you pull up, so yeah, so our preference would be to the do it north. on the north side, because it's it's kind of both north and west sides are essentially right. the front. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question for the applicant. Uh, 
Yes. I was just wondering if there's, uh, granted the, um, that easement, um, call it an alley or whatever you want to call it by the CVS, may not accommodate uh, fire apparatus, but is, are there any easement rights that your client may have that would allow for vehicular uh, egress and ingress and egress to that? Based on the survey and the information that we have, none yeah, exist. Nothing. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Ms. Simperman. So just piggybacking with what the um, law director said, that is not an option anymore now. The, so the first site plan that you submitted to us is not an option. Yes, ma'am. As far as exiting That's correct. through CBS. Okay. Um, okay, my, I'm going to ask about the um, landscaping on the south end of the property, which um, abuts the um, flag lot. And right now there's a... Um, Okay, so right now there's a um, solid eight-foot fence, it looks like, just to the north of the existing building. That's correct. It currently and then it goes down to six feet? It goes, well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an eight-feet eight fence, but it only runs part of the way. Currently, there's a jut out on the backside of the existing office, and there's a couple air-conditioned units, and that's about where that fence stops currently. Right, but then it goes to the back, and it goes down to a six-foot height. I'm not sure on the height. It does. Okay. <laughs> And my concern <clears throat> on that side is um, there's a lot of vegetation there right now. Yes, ma'am. And I'm not sure that the um, property owner to the south is going to want you to eliminate all that vegetation to put in a fence. Um, so I'm not saying I I'm actually, you know, for fences, I like, I like them, especially when we have commercial properties backing up to it's a commercial zone, but it's a residential piece of property. Um, Are you referring to the fence that's along the existing building? Or yes. Okay. Yes. And then you're going to continue it for the proposed building, correct? Yes, ma'am. That's where my concern is, that you're going to be eliminating some natural vegetation to put in a fence and adhere to our landscaping code. You're going to be putting in some other vegetation. I'm thinking that you need to get together maybe with the administration and look at and possibly the um, homeowner to the south there, and find out if a fence is the best solution okay. to that dilemma. Because I, I'm thinking... There, there is another option, because okay. currently the fence is not on the property line. Okay. So we could actually maybe even do something on, on the other side of the fence I guess if you to just, help break that fence up. I, if you just look into it, I'm just thinking to install the fence, you might have to eliminate a lot of vegetation, and maybe the property owner doesn't want that. Okay. Um, and also, adhering to our um, landscaping code, it might... It doesn't, doesn't apply. It There's doesn't, no buffer requirements okay. required right. for this. Right, okay. They could put the fence wherever they want. Okay. And they're not required to right. meet so many plannings per 100... Okay, good. Rental feet. So I would definitely contact the homeowner to the south there and talk to them. Maybe they don't even want a fence. Okay. We'll get their input. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Fargo. Uh, being that this is going to be tabled, the elevations are fine. I think it, next time I, it might be good if we could see the elevations relative to the existing building. Okay, it's very close to what the existing building is. I mean, that would be a positive thing, okay. I think. But I think would pictures be acceptable? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I mean, just some reference to the existing building that this is going to be seen behind. I don't know how, however you want to do that. Okay, you know? and and also some colors, you know, or something colored uh, with the elevations so that we know what the materials are and how, what they look like relative to the new building. Certainly, we can building. add color to those right. if you could. Whatever way you want. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sedoti. Thank you. Uh, is the front lot and the back lot, you said they're under common ownership. Is it one parcel? Is it consolidated or do you intend to consolidate? So, so no, they're currently owned by Mentor Project LLC. I think Mr. Uh, Dr. Schneider's father recently passed away, and there is something going on mm -hmm. with probate to combine these into two. But right now, I think his deceased father owns one and he owns one. But the plan is to eventually consolidate them? That is correct. Okay. 
and it was mentioned in my early conversations with planning that that would be something that you would probably requ request. That's so. why I asked. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Any other comments or questions? Motion to table. Second. Just please call the roll. Mrs. Simperman. Yes. Ms. Moritz. Yes. Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Valeri. Yes. Mr. Varga. Thank yes. You. Item number nine, miscellaneous review of a modification to a final site plan at 7380 Menor Avenue. See that applicants here. Um, we are now Name. owners of the uh, Andrew Long Car, a Patriot Car Wash, one of the owners, property and sites. And uh, we just, after we got approval, we went back and uh, looked at it, and we were just looking to change the front just to give it a little bit more, uh, a little more height and more uh, something to break up the just a straight shot. So that's so basically that's what we were coming in here. It's just uh, make that modification to the front. Facing the, it'd be the one facing Menor Avenue, obviously. Mr. Spence, any comments from the administration? Varied roof lines are recommended by the design guidelines. Yeah. It's a little more complicated than that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I personally prefer what you had presented the last time when you were in. Um, yes, the building looked boxy, but I think it. I'm not a big fan of the uh, the height and the the archway, but no, well, Mr. Chairman, making by way of foundation or background, the the the, the design guidelines <laughs> do call for variable roof lines, and so the history was as you drive around the commercial districts in the city, the primary method of doing that were these parapets, um, but rather than really adding any architectural detail or any other treatment, they became plat sign platforms. And so what you had was these proposals to kind of just extend up a, you know, typically, you know, the front exterior wall into, into a parapet and get your signage a little higher than it may otherwise be, get it above what might be the natural sign band of it. Of, of a... So uh, I think the Planning Commission has been pretty good with these parapets relative to varying the roof lines, that there be some type of a return on it so that they become actual architectural elements as opposed to just, just a sign platform. Now, complicating all of that is is when you see that there's signage on that, that's actually now prohibited by code per, per the 2012 amendment. Roof signs are prohibited, and a parapet, um, so signage on a parapet is considered a roof sign. Um, again, parapet means a sign mounted on the vertical surface of or on top of parapet of a building. Parapet sign is included within the definition of a roof sign, and the code prohibits roof signs. So if the sole purpose in doing this is just to get a sign platform, you can't get your signage on it. Um, now, there may be other ways to, to vary the roof line here and, and, and get, get, get past that issue. I'm, I'm not a designer, of course, but um, that's, that's, uh, that's not a very brief summary of the history, but it is, a, it is nonetheless a, how, we got to, how we got to today. And the purpose that you're looking for to modify this? It, I mean, basically, it's, you know, there's a couple purposes I, I you know I'll be completely honest with you is just to get up a little bit and then um, also just to break up that front you know it's you know again we're just asking that's why we're here <laughs> you know if we didn't ask then we would never know comments or question from the commission <clears throat> well it it sounds to me as though based on your description that this wouldn't be allowed well, you can you can permit the parapet. That's not that's that's an architectural issue. No, but but as it combines with the sign, <laughs> then that becomes a problem. Then it becomes the problem. Uh, now um, again, there may be a design that would that would overcome that. Again, I think the commission's been pretty consistent with requiring a return on some of these parapet proposals and uh, making still, sure that the it's still a parapet though. If you're just returning the walls and the roof is still flat. Well, I guess it depends on how it's designed. It, it, uh -huh. it, it, it may be, it may not be. Again, I'm not a designer and I don't want to say and under no set of circumstances can't uh -huh. you have a, a, an architectural feature, um, you know, which, uh, which, is, which does not fall within that definition. But it, it definitely was meant to kind of kick into these, this type of specific request. 
and that applies to cupolas and other types of uh, architectural features as well. Signage on those is now prohibited. Um, so then going back to that point would be, I would like to see some type of return here rather than just extending that front wall straight up. And if, I guess with the, with, you know, the code and everything, it, I guess, you know, is it, who would I, I guess, speak with that would clean up that code, I guess, so we know what we're looking for? Like, how much do we have to change the facade, the front, to meet the requirements? I mean, is it something like, a, you know, are they looking to put, like, a square 10 by 10, you know, making, I guess, just a couple different, I guess, if it's, say, say if this, uh, the building's 36 feet wide and we go 20 feet is that where the sign is right now, if we were to extend that back like 10 feet and put a hip roof on it or do some kind of roof on it, does that now change what we're looking at in the code? Mr. Zeman? Well, again, I, you know, I think we'd have to kind of see it. Um, if, the, if the suggestion is to, to basically have that as a, a roofed, more of a roofed structure back there where there's some, some significant return, a roof on it, and, it's not by definition a parapet that that could that could suffice, but we've got to take a look at it. And um, again, every proposal has to has to be evaluated on its own particular merits. I, I still think then when we're talking about the uh, the more general uh, requirement in the architectural guidelines about varying the roof line, you you, you kind of can't ignore then the side elevations either, um, where where they're particularly visible. Um, from, from the right of way. And if, if that's going to be the case here, um, I, I don't know whether or not that gets, that, again, that's, that's more of a, you know, obviously a, an architectural review issue and, and not per se a legal issue, but I'm not sure how, how that then fits in with, uh, with the overall uh, design and appearance of the building. And, and I think if you were going to do a return, I, I think you'd end up needing to go the entire length of that building, at least on the west, west side. side. Okay. Um, trying to step that down, I don't think it's going to look right. The, okay. the east side, you're going to be hidden a little bit more, I believe, and then that south side's not going to be that drastic. No problem. But I, I think you'd need to present us with that and then come back and show us what that would look like. Okay. Right, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, just a question about even, even with the way you've described the, the limitations to signage on parapet walls, right now even the side wall or the west, the west facing wall that says car wash, that is on the parapet also. So would that I, be? I don't know where that is relative to the actual roof line. I'm not sure if that. It, there is a small curb above it. Most of that is a, the truss. On, it's most of that is on the wall. Okay. Well then, yeah. And not to try to tell you what to do, but if, if you kept the signage part of this thing in the line of the building where it wasn't a parapet in, within this strip mm -hmm. on the front. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be as big as you have it, but it would be located on that face that might be acceptable. You could still do something with the building to draw attention to it, but you just can't make it a sign. Maybe that's just another way to look at it. So I guess I'm, again, I'm just I'm, tr I'm trying to figure this out myself with these limitations. I guess my question then is, is say, if we remove the car wash sign, it's crowned over the top of the Patriot, do we, are you, will you be still looking for some changes? Because I'm now just adding facade to it, not. For no purpose. Yeah. Yeah, well, I. I guess, it, what is you, the commitment? You do actually have an approved elevation, though, right? I mean, right. If you did yep. approve this, you, yes, you it's go, all you go build it today. Yes, There's right. nothing holding you back. I don't have it. I, I would suggest if you end up coming back to us that you show us what was approved and what was, and what your changing so we can remember what it was okay if you're going to extend that front at all you're still going to need to do something on the sides okay that's i guess my you answered my question that that's okay if we do i guess my my, my next question is if if we do plan on coming back or we're just going to leave it the way it was approved and move on should it doesn't need to be tabled or do we recent should i do i have to make that decision sure. today right. why don't we no mr chairman why don't we go ahead and table and let you do some research? And, and then and you can let the administration know okay. whether you want to dismiss Perfect. or we're going to go forward. Sounds good. Okay. That was a motion. Yeah, it was a motion. Second. Jess, please call the roll. Mrs. Simperman. Yes. Ms. Moritz. Yes. 
Mr. Sedoti. Yes. Mr. Valeri. Yes. Mr. Varga. Yes. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. You too. Mr. Spence, anything in the director's report? Nope. No. Nope. Nope. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Good night.